hope I don't run over a pedestrian on Central. So, whenever, let's see, Morgan and I were like kids, whenever we bought our first house and we were married, I think we were like 19 or 20, and we paid like $60,000 for it, which is hilarious because I think that's how much his last vehicle cost. <laughs> um, and uh, let's see, whenever we split up, I kept the house because, you know, I'm the mom. I got the two girls. And um, Morgan, I'm pretty sure, came out of the came out of the womb a salesman. And somehow along the lines, he uh, decided that there was $14,000 in equity in the house. I don't know where the fuck he came up with that. But he was a nightmare to argue with. If you know Morgan, like... Morgan is not fun to argue with. You just, Morgan is super giving as long as you don't force his hand on anything, right? So whatever, so he decides that, that there's $14,000 in equity in the house. I didn't even challenge it. I mean, it was super traumatic. We were young. And um, anyway, so $7,000 split both ways. Well, he didn't want me to have to sell the house because of the girls, you know, and the house payment, God, it was like, 400 bucks a month. Oh, what a dream. And, um, so what I just decided to do and what, well, what we both decided to do was give, like I would give him, cut him a break on child support. So I took that $7,000 balance and child support was like a quarter of his fucking income. I mean, it was crazy. I felt sorry for him. I felt sorry for Morgan. And so we, I put back a hundred bucks a month of child support, give it back to him. And then I kept the house, but he still had to, I never refinanced it out of my name, but I sold it years later. And, um, he still had to sign off on everything. And then also I was married to another man, uh, for a couple of years while I lived in that house. And there was really not any equity that was built up. I mean, wow, what a different time. <laughs> the, the, the real estate market. And even though there was no equity or anything like that, whenever I did get ready to sell my house a couple of years later, I had to go back and have my ex-husband sign off that he was cool with me selling the house, um, even though his name wasn't on it. So there's so many different ways that property can be liquidated or kept or whatever. It just depends on every situation but essentially if you're ever married at any point in time unless this property is like in a trust or something you've talked to a lawyer about that by Bo Durbin um then you have equitable interest in that home whether your name is on the loan or not if you were married and and that house was acquired before or during the marriage doesn't matter if you're on the deed mortgage anything you have equitable interest and the both parties have to have the each other's permission to sign off, quit claim, whatever, to sell that property. Fun fact. Honestly, people are like, oh yeah, don't get married, don't get married. But let me tell you something. You cannot get married and buy a house together. And guess what? <laughs> if you split up, it is a nightmare. It's a nightmare. Okay? Because there is no divorce property settlement. Right? I don't even know how that's going to shake out. I mean, I would just assume that most people would just pay for an appraisal and then figure out if you could buy one or the other person out of it, or I don't know. But it's actually, in my oh-so-humble opinion, safer to buy real estate married if you're buying it together versus not together, unless you have some type of like contractual agreement or something like that. But that's my little two cents. Hope everybody's having a great Wednesday. I should have had a closing on Friday, so it hasn't happened. The appraiser decided to go out and do the appraisal on Friday. That's whenever I was supposed to close. So I'm just acting like everything's fine. Bye.